my notes back open so I can do this whole thing again. What's up everybody? What's happening? Welcome to another episode. This week's episode we are talking about tips and tricks that can help you shoot better photos. Sorry, I got distracted really quick because I saw the reflection of my phone in the glass. You don't, you don't care about that. Roll that intro. I always wanted to say that real quick. You know, it feels good to have an intro to roll. But yeah, nonetheless, roll that intro. welcome back to the channel sorry I've been slagging on the uploads that is just me you know me I'm trying to be all I can be you see okay anywho today's episode is about tips and tricks to make your photos look better than they do right now so first tip I have is you gotta buy a camera I'm, I'm joking, that's not the first tip. Anywho, first of all, I just wanna say that I just recorded this whole video and it was blurry and I didn't know because I don't have my glasses on because I broke them because they was under my pillow. I know they shouldn't have been under my pillow. Sorry, but hopefully now this is in focus and we're just gonna make this video. Moving on, first tip that I have is do not shoot photos at high noon. When I say high noon, I mean actually any time in the afternoon from like 12 to maybe even like four, depending on where you live and how dark, how early it gets dark outside, when golden hour, sunset hour is. You wanna be shooting photos during either the morning time, early morning or late in the evening like golden hour which is when the sun is just starting to set and it's not so harsh anymore because the harsh sun is going to give you dark shadows under the eyes and under the nose and it's not going to look good in your photos but if you just happen to have to shoot at high noon because you got a client that just will not be able to make it at any other time you want to get something called a reflector and i have one right now that i'm using because I have a very ugly yellow lamp behind it that's got very harsh light and I'm using the inside of my reflector to diffuse the light. That is what reflectors are used for and it comes inside of this big circle that has a gold side. So if you're outside and it's kind of cloudy outside and you want to try to create some kind of a sunny light, this gold side will reflect a warmer tone back onto your subject's face or if it's really sunny outside and you're trying to get a cooler tone you can use the silver side to create a cooler tone if you turn it inside out you also have a white side and you also have a black side now the black side is meant to block out anything to stop anything from coming through and it is big enough that you can also use it as a backdrop for headshots which if you remember this image that I took when like the start of the second season of this, that photo I took using the black side of that reflector as a backdrop behind me so reflector is a very handy thing and they're only like 30 some bucks I think on Amazon links to stuff that I talk about down below also I will link this camera because this is my new camera that I am enjoying. And I took this photo with it. This is like one of my first photos taken with this camera that I edited and uploaded on the Instagram. But yes, that's what a reflector will do for you if you just have to shoot in harsh sunlight. Also, you need to find some shade if you're gonna be out in harsh sunlight. When I was downtown doing the fashion photo shoot with my friend Tay, 
the reason why we were able to get such great photos out of that shoot is because we were around a bunch of tall buildings with lots of shade, even though it was like 3 p.m. And so we were still getting amazing photos. Next tip is to be aware of your composition. Sometimes, as photographers, you're just looking through here and you're you're not really focusing on you know what kind of composition you're getting you're just making sure you see that subject in the frame and you snap in the picture but you want to be more aware of how you're setting up how you're framing your subject for example once again i'm going to refer to the shoot downtown with tay some of my favorite images are where i have him off to the left side of the frame and the right side is completely blurry. That is achieved, by the way, by having a very low aperture number, which means a very fast aperture. I think my aperture was at about 1.8 or 1.4, I'm not sure, but it was in the, the I used the rule of thirds there by having him off to the left side and having the right side be blurry. That also makes him stand out from the background. So that's something to always keep in mind when you're framing your subject, look for a different type of framing, like use the rule of thirds to your advantage. You might wanna have them off to the bottom right corner and using the rule of thirds helps your photos be more dramatic. It gives them more depth. It just makes your photos more interesting to look at. Tip number three, do not shoot in auto. I cannot stand when I see, I guess I shouldn't say that I can't stand it, but it just, it's just highly annoying when I see photographers shooting in automatic mode because it tells me that you haven't taken the time to actually learn about your camera and learn how to control it. My professor, my professor in college used to always tell us, don't work for the camera, make the camera work for you. So by choosing to put your camera in automatic mode, you're choosing to let it make all the decisions for you just if you take the time and learn how to shoot in manual mode and how to control your camera, your photos will go from like right here to like boom, I promise you, I promise you. And a good start is to check out my basic camera settings video. I will link that right here. So you can go check that out. That's gonna tell you the three main settings that are used when you're setting up your camera to take portrait photos or any photos, landscape, it doesn't matter. These are the three settings that you're gonna need. ISO, aperture, and your shutter speed. Next tip, I don't know which one it is, is to edit your photos. No matter how perfect you think you shot them out on location in the field when you were shooting or how perfect they looked on the back of this tiny little screen, please, you wanna load those photos into your computer and look at them inside Lightroom or Photoshop, they're probably gonna look a lot different from what you saw on the back of the screen. And it could just be minor adjustments like the brightness or the highlights or the shadows. Maybe you wanna adjust your whites and blacks, you wanna take out a little saturation, add a little sharpness, but the photo is gonna look different once you blow it up on your computer screen than it did on the back of this tiny little viewfinder on your camera. Please don't be handing clients a memory card saying, here's your photos. No. Sit down. Take the time to sit down. Use YouTube or read books, whatever you want to do, and learn about Photoshop or Lightroom or some kind of editing software to add some kind of enhancement to the photos. That is all the tips I have for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I can get back to making more videos, more content. There's a fly in here that I want to kill so bad. I'm going to get my bug zapper and just zap it. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, go ahead and punch that subscribe button because I love to have you on this journey. Hit the like button. Comment. Tell me what you learned. Tell me how it affects you. Tell me what you could use. What, what's going on. Tell me something good. And hit the share button. If you learn something, somebody else could learn something too. So share this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. <gasps>